Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Example of Play. So today I want to answer a question that I see asked a lot, and that's people wondering what is a good starter war game? If we're talking computer war games, people want to know where do they begin, or maybe they played like one game and they want to know what some of the other options are. And you know, it, it depends a lot on what they're interested in, what historical setting, or maybe they're not looking for historical, they're looking for fictional. Um, it depends on what kind of scale are they interested in. There's tactical, strategic, operational, or a mixture of the different ones. And sometimes people are new, so new that they don't even know that those are options, that what do those things mean? What are the different ones that they can play? So I thought I'd make a video uh, just about, I say top five, it's not really like top five, like the best five, but just five of games that I've played that I think are good starting points for beginners. Um, depending on what they're looking for. So I've got kind of a variety of stuff here and some of them are really easy to get into. Some are a, a little more complex, but not necessarily hard to get into. And my goal here is just to, if you're someone who's out there looking for a, a starting point, this is kind of a, a smattering of options of different time periods, different styles of game, different uh, scales of combat. And uh, so we'll run through five games and show you a little gameplay and just kind of talk about what I like about them and what makes them maybe a good starting point. So we'll start things off with Panzer Corps 2. Now this is a fairly recent game, came out in 2020, but it is actually kind of the latest in a long lineage of war game uh, going back to Panzer General, which came out way back in 1994. Um, if you go look up screenshots of it, it's it's not that far removed from this. This is just the prettier, nicer, more user-friendly version of that old game. Um, but it it's a formula that's worked for a long time, and that's why people keep enjoying it. They keep making new versions of it. And you'll actually see there's lots of other games out there that use the exact same style as this, but this is kind of like the core version of it. Um, what makes this great for beginners is that it's pretty simple to get into. It's pretty easy to understand. You move units around. Uh, each player takes turns moving all their units around on hexes. Um, the units are things like infantry, tanks. There's lots of different varieties of those units, but the basic idea is pretty simple. And you'll kind of quickly learn, okay, anti-tank guns are good against tanks. Tanks are good against infantry, unless those infantry are in like a forest or a city, and that kind of changes the balance. So there is a lot of strategy to learn, but also it's pretty straightforward. So units health is usually based on the number 10 is kind of your starting point, though some can be higher or lower. Basically, all, the main thing you need to know is the higher the number, the stronger the unit is. As it takes damage, its number is going to go down, and that makes it both weaker in attacking and easier for your opponent to destroy. So um, you kind of want to limit the losses your units take, but help, helpfully, uh, whenever you aim one of your units at an enemy to see if you're going to attack, it'll show you like, hey, these are kind of the odds. This is not exactly what you'll get usually, um, but it's pretty close to what you, you're going to expect your losses to be. So you can avoid wasting attacks against units that are just going to get wiped out. The way the game is structured is that you play a series of scenarios and campaigns. One caveat with this one is the main campaign of the game. It's called Panzer Corps. Your, your plan is the Germans in the base game and in most of the DLC. And so you can take a German force basically through the whole war. There's a couple points where you can decide, like, do I want to go to Italy? Do I want to go to Russia? But mostly you're playing these a set of linked scenarios. And each one you're going to have different objectives to try to take different towns or defend or, or whatever. Um, but you, the, one of the fun things of the game is that you have this core force that you carry forward uh, from mission to mission. You'll get some extra units sometimes, but you have your guys that you've picked that you buy, you get points, uh, you buy them, you upgrade them, you can swap to different models of tanks through the war, that sort of thing. So it's fun to have that core force that you carry through the whole campaign. And you can also get like hero characters that can give perks to a certain unit. There's also multiplayer. Um, like I said, there's a lot of DLC that basically lets you play through the whole war again as the Germans, but with more missions, greater detail, um, basically just a very super long version of the same thing. 
and they most recently the most recent dlc was actually one that where you play as the americans so kind of mixed it up and if it goes like it did with panzer Corps one eventually there will be a lot of allied content too but for the base game you're mostly playing as the germans there's also skirmish maps um, where you can play against the ai just kind of like a randomly generated battles where you can pick whatever faction you want to be but overall panzer Corps two a really good starting point just because it's simple but it gives you a lot of fun concepts uh, and introduces you to kind of the war game basics of hexes and moving units around like that Game number two for this list is going to be something totally different. I'm going to go with Ultimate General Gettysburg. So this is a real-time, we're going to call it tactical, because that's kind of how it handles, though really um, the scale is thousands of soldiers, but the way you handle it is, is more tactical. Um, but Ultimate General Gettysburg, a great starting point for a different style of war game, but still one where you're playing a lot of strategy. Um, and you're, it's also historical, and it's interesting because it's focused on just the one battle of Gettysburg. The way the game plays out is you can choose any point in the battle you want to start, but typically you would play a campaign where you start at the opening of the battle, which is a great way for beginners to get into it because the battle opens with a small-scale skirmish between just a few units, just like it historically did, and then it gradually grows into this huge battle. And the kind of the cool part is as you play the different times and days of the battle, the the map, you're fighting over the same map, but diff different parts of it as the battle shifts around. You see a lot of the same units. So if you're familiar with the history, you'll see a lot of the generals and the locations that you've probably heard of. And what makes it really fun for me, and it was a direct inspiration for the game, the, the visuals are really good. And they make you think about the historical maps. If you ever looked at like these maps of Civil War battlefields, I forget the author, um, but or if it's if it's a certain author or just a certain style, but where you have like these big arrows showing like these this unit moved here or there. That's how you actually control your soldiers in this. Is you just drag, you click and drag on the unit, and it makes this big like red or blue arrow showing like okay these guys are going to move up to here, and it's really easy to understand. It's really easy to grasp. And then you can also give some more detailed orders like holding or charging, but generally you're just moving guys around on this map that looks like it's like a historical map come to life. And the, the sound is pretty good, the presentation is good, and you get a sense of how these battles played out where reinforcements would arrive but they're really far away and you're thinking about can my guys hold here, where do I put, I got these cannons coming in, where can I put them that will be most effective. So it's not a super realistic game really in the way it handles because the, the combat really is pretty fast compared to reality but it does make you think about a lot of those same decisions that the the real generals would have had to think about of positioning units where you've got these big groups of guys but you have to decide where they can be placed to be most effective and where the enemy might show up and it's easy it's easy to handle it's easy to get a grasp on. It's kind of a smaller game, but the price is only $15. So it's pretty pretty small price to get in. And if you do like it, there's also Ultimate General Civil War, which is the same thing, but you're playing out the whole war instead of just this one battle of Gettysburg. But I think this makes a really, really solid starting point if you're interested in US Civil War or just this kind of uh, more real-time uh, tactical battle. All right, so now we're gonna switch gears again. We're gonna go with Armored Brigade for game number three. Now this is a real-time tactical game, just like the last one, but totally different in uh, style, in setting, and how it handles. So this is a game set during the Cold War, so it's a Cold War gone hot scenario. We've got NATO versus USSR with all the different side countries thrown in that could have been part of that conflict what makes this a good one for beginners is that at first glance it might seem a little bit intimidating but really the way you the controls handle you order your units around you can pause it it's real time but you can pause and you'll want to but you can give orders to like a headquarters of a company and instead of you having to handle each individual unit you can just tell this company or whatever headquarters unit you have available at different levels 
hey, I want you to go take this town or go defend this spot. And the AI will actually kind of just take over, go there and do it. And then you can fine tune it if you want to. You can control every individual squad and vehicle. But that I like that command approach where you're not the one commanding each individual unit because that's really not how it works in real life. In real life, you're, you know, you're giving that headquarters unit a command. They're giving their subordinates a command all the way down the chain. And so I like games that have that approach. The other thing I really like about Armored Brigade is that the scale is, is really variable. You look at you can look at this giant map of these areas of, of like Germany and other parts of Europe and you can just click and it's like a it's a huge map that's based on real real maps, but then you can just click a little box like I want to fight over this spot. And so you basically you can just turn any little spot into a battlefield. And then the game will just look at the map, it'll assign objectives, and then it's just up to you to say, okay, these are the forces I have, and I'm gonna make a plan and go take those spots on the map or try to hold them or, or do whatever the scenario is. And while the game does have some pre-made scenarios, really the main way I've always played it that you're probably gonna see most people play it is you can either generate a random mission like I was talking about, or you can actually do the same thing, but generate a dynamic campaign so you look at that map you pick like a campaign area and then it's going to zoom in within that and play out scenarios over that area and depending on how it goes like do you win the scenario or that one you kind of push the battlefield back and forth and then you have a lot of freedom to choose you know how many points do you want to be able to spend on a scenario so you get to go in you can pick like which units you want you can limit yourself you can let the ai pick for you um, but it's always fun to like have kind of a shopping cart and you've got all these points and you decide, okay, I want this unit, this unit, I want these kind of tanks, I want some snipers, I want some artillery, some aircraft support, and you just have so many points and you get to spend them on whatever you want to build up your force or take a force that the AI generates for you. Both ways can be fun to play. What I love about the game, like I said, is the, the scalability. So you can play like little bitty scenarios with just a few units to get yourself started if you're a beginner, like you're watching this video. Or once you get comfortable with it, you can ramp up those points and you can have a ton of units on the screen. So while the graphics are pretty simple, that also means that you can play with like huge forces and the game still works at any scale, basically. Just the more units, the more complex the scenario is going to be. And then one other cool thing that comes from it having those kind of simple graphics and everything is that while it is set in the Cold War, there's actually a mod. You can go on the Steam Workshop and you can just click a button and get this mod that makes the game World War II. And you have like every faction from World War II, hundreds and hundreds of different units, and the game handles basically the same. But if you're born to World War II, this game basically has that entirely included. And then if you do enjoy the game, and you're thinking these graphics are really simple. Armored Brigade 2 is actually coming out pretty soon. I'm not sure when exactly, but when it comes out, it'll be similar. It'll handle basically the same, but have a little bit nicer graphics. It'll have like 3D graphics that are still simple, but give you a little more immersed down on the battlefield instead of just looking at these 2D units. But I think Armored Brigade, it might look a little more intimidating at first glance than the first two games, but actually it's pretty easy to get into and learn. And even if you don't do great, it's still fun to play, just moving your guys around, watching a big battle play out. And you'll get better as you kind of learn to use the different tactics. So I think also a great beginner war game. Now for game number four, we're going back to World War II. It's going to be Strategic Command, World War II, War in Europe. So Strategic Command is the first game we've looked at that's at the strategic scale, like it's in the name. What makes this game great for beginners is that it's part of a series. So if you learn how to play this game, there's other ones. There's World War I, there's U.S. Civil War, and then there is uh, wo World at War, which is the same thing as World War II, but the entire war. So it's going to include all the other theaters, where this one, War in Europe, is just the war in Europe. But that makes it a kind of a better starting point because it's a little more focused. The scale is more detailed for Europe versus the world game but it's a little easier because you're not having to worry about you know the Pacific and all that you're just worried about Europe at first glance you might think okay this looks a little bit like Panzer Corps 
uh, simpler graphics, but kind of the same thing of I've got these different unit counters, I'm moving around, they have like a health of 10. The combat is really pretty similar to Panzer Corps, but this is gonna give you that strategic level of decision making. So you're not just playing one scenario to another. You don't just have your core units that you're kind of building and getting experience and upgrading these guys. You're worried about the entire war. So you're building the units, you're doing researching new technologies, you're making some di di diplomatic decisions as you go and deciding where do I want to send units, not just on this battlefield, but like, do I want to send them to the east front or the west front? Do I want to send, do I want to invade Italy? Do I want to invade uh, Normandy, like historical? Or do I want to do something totally different? And one of the things that makes the game fun is, or and replayable is that you'll get you have the basic gameplay of all that stuff, but you'll get these historical decision points where you can do, it'll say like, you know, do you want to commit some resources to do this or that? And it'll give you a little historical snippet of what would happen historically or what some of the alternatives were. And uh, usually it'll make sense to do the historical thing, but sometimes you'll will and say, oh, I want to see the alternate history. What happens if we, what happens if we commit these resources differently than what happened in real life and see how that plays out? it's a great beginner strategic game because while you might be looking at this and thinking, wow, that's a lot of units, it's not that hard to control. And typically you're not going to be attacking and moving every single unit every turn because that's going to be wasteful. You're going to be looking to maximize your units effectiveness. So you might only be attacking with some of those units. And then one thing that can make it easier is you're playing either the Axis or the Allies but you can actually let the AI handle specific countries. So if like you just want to play as Italy or you just want to play as Russia, you can do that and let the AI do all the other factions. And then you might get frustrated with them and decide, okay, I'll actually, I want to handle everything. But for a starting point, you can just pick like one country to play and then you don't have to worry about all the other ones. I think uh, this series is my favorite for this scale, just because like I said, it's it gives you a lot of the detail of having like dozens of units to move around and deciding, you know, what your strategic approach is as well as your operational level. But at the same time, it's really manageable because uh, units do have a lot of stats and stuff, but you don't have to, you don't have to get into the nitty gritty to have a good time with this game. And you can set the difficulty to different levels. So if you get really good, you can crank it up. But if you just want to play, you just want to move your units around and kind of fight out these big battles and, and come up with your grand plans and see how they play out, it makes it really easy to do that. And so I think that's what makes, for me, it makes it a great starting point. And then kind of looking to the future, besides the other games in the series that are already out, there is Strategic Command uh, War in the Pacific, which is going to be this, but focused on the Pacific Theater, which I think giving it that greater level of detail um, will be really interesting to play out those naval battles and island hopping campaigns and everything. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Finally, for game number five, I'm going to go with one of my all-time favorites. It's going to be probably the most advanced of the beginner games just to get into because it is a little finicky. It does take a little learning, but it's worth it. And I'm going to go with Combat Mission Shock Force 2. So don't worry about the two so much. Um, this series has been long running and Shock Force originally came out in like 2007 or eight. And it was the first version of the series to use 3D graphics. And this newer engine, which I say new now, it's like almost 20 years old, but uh, the Shock Force two is basically the remaster of that with all the DLC content rolled in together, but it plays pretty much the same, just better with all the upgrades to the engine over the years. So I could do a whole video about the combat mission series. The basic is, all right, it's tactical for sure. You're controlling individual units, individual squads of soldiers, but the way you handle it is kind of unique and fun. There's two different modes. You can play real time with pause where it's basically like a real time strategy game. The action plays out and you can pause it, but stuff just goes when it's not paused or you can play uh, the we go mode where basically the you set orders, you say, okay, I, these are all the orders I wanna give. The opponent is doing the same thing. And then when you hit go, the, 
the game plays for one minute. And during that minute, you can't control anything. You're basically like watching a movie. And then after that minute's over, it'll stop again. And then you can change all your orders. And then it just goes one minute at a time until you get to the end of the scenario. And what's fun about that is you can play out a turn. And if something crazy happens, like you can replay it and watch it from different angles and kind of see like what all happened. And or you can just play it real time, which is sometimes I do that because it goes a little faster playing that way. But you'll miss some of the things like you might not see what happened to this tank. It just got blown up and it's just gone. But if you play the Wii Go, you can rewind the clock and see it, see what happened. What makes these games really fun is that the engine, they're trying to simulate things down as realistically as possible. So each of your units, each soldier has got their own little mini AI that thinks for itself to some degree, uh, to, for better or worse sometimes. But every individual soldier is modeled. Like each guy, each squad has so much ammo that's tracked down to the last bullet. Every bullet that's fired it travels across the map and actually hits something. Um, the tanks, whenever they're shooting at each other, it's doing these crazy calculations so that it's as realistic as possible. And so a lot of times you'll see that you got to use sort of realistic tactics for things to work out because your units, if you just try to move up, like you're going to get shredded. You've got to stop. You've got to give your guys a chance to try to spot the enemy. You're not always guaranteed that every unit's going to be able to see an enemy unit. They have to actually communicate with each other and pass around information you have to suppress the enemy you can call in artillery and airstrikes and you have to kind of make the most of what units you have available the setting of the game is really interesting uh, battlefront the developers they looked at flashpoints around the real world and used that to pick where to make their games for and so this is set in a syrian conflict where the united states and nato did intervene in a syrian civil war and so with the Shock Force 2, it rolls together all these DLC that came out back in the day. And you actually can get to play as there's US Army, Marines, there are several UK, Germany, a couple Dutch, several different NATO factions. And then also you can play as Syrian, like regular army, and insurgent forces. You'll see some interesting stuff that you don't see a lot in other games, like vehicle IEDs. You might have a suicide car bomb come rushing at your forces. But depending on the scenario, you might also be going up against a fairly regular force with T-90 tanks and regular soldiers. You can play multiplayer on this game, but I've mostly played single player. There are a ton of handmade scenarios that are very specific and they all have like a briefing that explains the situation and what your forces are and what your objectives are. And the maps are all pretty unique in that they're all handmade. There is a quick battle mode that can generate battles for you, but I won't go into the details. Basically the way the AI works in the game, it's not the best for that. It's really kind of relies on having a handmade scenario where the designer sets the forces and kind of tells them where to go versus the randomly generated ones. But you won't have to worry about that because there, in this version of the game, there are tons of scenarios. There's dozens of standalone scenarios, and there are like half a dozen campaigns that will take you many hours to play through. And so I think, although this is probably one of the harder games to learn all the controls and everything, it's still a good choice for beginners because you're going to get some of that visual spectacle that you're not getting with the other ones that I've talked about in this video. And also, if you do learn the system, there are a bunch of other combat mission games. So there's World War II, a bunch of those. There is a Cold War game. There is a, another modern warfare game that kind of the same thing happened as Syria. There's It's a Ukraine-based one where US and NATO did intervene in a war in Ukraine. They made it before the war actually happened. But if you want to play that out, it's available. And I just like it because combat mission is pretty much one of my favorite war game series going way back. It's the series that got me into computer war games, and so it was kind of my gateway drug into the genre, and so I think it probably could be for other people too. So that's going to wrap up the video. There's five beginner war games of a variety of shapes and sizes and styles, and I hope if you are someone who's just getting into war games, you see that there are a lot of options. There's a lot of different ways to play these sort of games. And hopefully there's kind of something out there for everyone. 
I'm sure people will jump in the comments, throw out your thoughts on great starting games. There are a ton of options, like I said. I'm going to call this top five, but it's just my top five. So feel free to share your thoughts in the comments if you've got suggestions for people or want to talk about some of your favorite games. Until next time, hit that like, the subscribe, get more videos like this and other war and strategy games here from Example of Play. Thanks for watching. Bye.